Hello, and welcome to Too Stupid to Live, a podcast that reviews romance novels $5 and under. I'm your host, Becky Feldman, and what's that? Oh, the doctor is in. Yes, today we are reviewing a medical romance. And in my very medical, very smart opinion of medicine, today's book that we are reviewing, I believe, medically, is the perfect prescription if you love an enemies to lovers romance novel. Today, we are reviewing The Worst Guy by Kate Canterbury, which is currently $4.99. Now, before we get into a stimulating examination of the book, let me introduce today's guest. Tori, the host of the pop culture podcast Ready to Be Petty, is back. And she is here not only to review The Worst Guy, but also to promote her new romance podcast, Ready to Be Romanced. So if you need to supplement your roster of romance podcasts for your ears, I highly recommend you check out the show. I just recorded an episode and I had so much fun. So without further ado, let's scrub up, folks, because it's a super fun episode of TSTL and it's about to begin. So please enjoy the best review of The Worst Guy. Oh my god, Tori. I'm back. She's back, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> the petty girl is back. <laughs> and I am truly like ready not to be annoying, but like ready to be petty about this book. Oh, I have oh my so god. much to say. <laughs> I me too. And um yes, 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 yes. But before we get to that, you have you started you have a podcast, Ready to Be Petty, where you just discuss like the petty things of the week it is so fun so enjoyable um it's so petty and people need to be petty more I think like I was talking with someone like a few months ago about like how someone had like a really someone was going through something hard and they were having like a really good attitude and it made us so mad because it's like have a bad (laughs) attitude (laughs) totally no I feel that all the time also it's just like if you can be petty about the small things and then put your energy and patience and like kindness and thoughtfulness into like the tougher things. Like, so it's like, yeah, let's let's talk shit about how a crow ate my muffin last week, and I was scared for Bert about birds for like. <laughs> birds are scary. I will yeah, I, until I, now. Yeah, really. like the like beaks are so they're so pointy. So I'm kind know, of like do I not don't like. Trust, no, I don't. You don't know. I, I hear you. I'm not scared of birds, and I'm petty about it. <laughs> <laughs> um but you started a new podcast as mm-hmm. you so you are a petty ready to be petty podcast host but you are also mm-hmm. before that an avid romance reader and you started a romance podcast makes I sense did. <laughs> it does yeah I was joking with my therapist a few weeks ago because I was like yeah I turned my only other hobby into <laughs> a capitalist yeah. venture what else are you gonna do I don't understand people who have hobbies who don't have a podcast about it like it just feels no, seriously like, you do something like just for fun that makes no sense no sense at all but yeah basically I was just reading a lot of books um and then I have friends in my life that I talk about them with now on the podcast but like I was just you know I had a few friends to talk about the books with but I was like I need to talk more about this like I Mm -hmm. want to talk about the nitty gritty details I really want to get into it and you know you can only exhaust your friends so much with like (laughs) with the details and Mm -hmm. um yeah it's been so much fun getting to cover books that I've never read before or explore other genres and yeah really talk about like like the content of the books for sure but like how it made us feel and why romance is important and mm-hmm. all of that has been like really fun too yeah absolutely because like you did an episode where you were talking about like book talk and like I saw so many mm-hmm. similarities between you know talking about kind of the scandals amongst publishing and you know kind of your celebrity kind of yeah, scandal-y yeah, yeah. kind of things like it's so interesting to see like there's it's like two communities and we're all the same and it's like it's like 
a scan like scandals are all the same you know depending on the community who thinks they're a scandal if that makes any sense at all <laughs> no it, it does and like I thought back immediately so I yeah I did an episode about like the rise of Colleen Hoover mm-hmm. and basically the inf- impact of book talk on yeah. the publishing industry with a publishing expert and I was thinking immediately like did you watch the show Younger with Hillary yeah. Duff mm-hmm. yeah like I was like I felt like her <laughs> like and Sutton Foster and just that there is so much like secrecy and juicy details and scandal and stuff in the publishing industry so like yeah I'm obviously mostly we're doing like reviews and stuff like that right. but like the industry as a whole is interesting there's also like so many critical conversations that you need to have about the genre like mm-hmm. it's just so multifaceted so it was my love of romance is very similar to my love of pop culture and stuff where it's like we can have fun but we can also be like critical and like think about things and yeah. then uh, there's also like lots of juicy like intrigue sure yeah. absolutely yeah um so you started your podcast um what kind of like interesting conversations and topics have come up for you that you didn't expect before the romance podcast Yeah, I definitely think seeing yourself in characters that, Mm. like, I'm assuming people, when we talk about the wrong guy, really saw themselves in Sarah. Like I saw myself in both, but... Yeah, 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 yeah. (laughs) totally, totally. But yeah, like, I I definitely think, like, feeling represented on the page is really Mm. important. I also think um, this we haven't dove too much into my podcast but I'm hoping we will but just like how it's opened up conversations about like intimacy and sex and romance for me at least in my personal life and stuff like that and like I think I've learned so much about myself from this genre and I know surface level people you know kind of write it off as like oh it's just smut it's just um chick lit like that type of stuff and I know you talk about this all the time Mm -hmm. but like but it's like it's it's really dismissed and Mm -hmm. um I've just learned so much about myself and I love having those conversations with other people or just like even just talking about enjoyment of reading because yeah I was a big reader as a kid Mm. Um, and through my teen years, but when I went to college, I stopped because I was reading like academic papers and shit. Yeah. And then I tried to re-enter reading after I graduated and I was picking up the same books as I was in high school. So I was like, I'm not loving this because I don't connect with any of these characters anymore and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then like almost 10 years passed and then I picked up a romance novel and I was like, oh my God, this is so fun. Um, So Mm -hmm. yeah, even just finding a new, new -er hobby or like a new twist on an old hobby or whatever has been like really, really enjoyable. That's awesome. You, it's because I was listening to your episode today of, of, you know, with the publishing expert and Mm -hmm. like, you know, she was talking about, like, reading for pleasure and how you can read for pleasure. And I think, like, like I, like I education is important, but I feel like reading is now, like, I think in our, in our brains as we're growing up, reading is equated with school. And we think yes. if we're going to read something, we're going to have a test on it. Or if we're yes. going to read something, it has to be so we learn productive. something. Productive. Yes, productive. That's it. Yes. Yeah. And, and it's like, oh, you forget, like, like school's great get stay in school kids but like yeah you know, yeah of adults, you know? <laughs> yeah. and it's like you can like read something unproductive no there's no test at the end but I think we're so programmed to to feel that way yeah totally I think that's another thing about my life post pandemic or whatever like you know post 2020 mm-hmm. yeah that I've been thinking about a lot is just like how a lot of times I didn't take a moment to enjoy something yes mm-hmm And I feel like now a day is like I practice enjoyment so much more. Like I'll make myself a nice coffee. I'll Mm -hmm. put on nice lighting and like ambient lighting and like read a book or something like that, which is like truly something which seems so simple, but like it's something I like really didn't do. Yeah, I relate. Before. (laughs) Yeah, I immediately relate. And if I was doing something like I 
when I first started reading romance, I thought, like, this is something that's, like, just for me, blah, blah, blah. I didn't tell anyone, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say, and I, and I would, like, if I read a romance any other time between, like, 10, if, if it wasn't between, like, 10.30 p.m. to 11 p.m., then I, I felt guilty about, like, my totally. life. Totally. <laughs> that's totally another piece of it. It's, like, mm-hmm. if you're not reading just moments before you fall asleep, like mm-hmm. you're like a lazy slob that like right. has yeah. no value in this world or whatever. Exactly. Like, yeah. That's not true. It's such a valid hobby. I'm so glad. Like that's one of the benefits of book talk and stuff cuz we were talking mostly I feel like about some of the negative impacts but like mm-hmm. definitely I feel like not that we had to like normalize reading but like I definitely think we normalized talking about reading Mm -hmm. and what we were what we're reading um and not being embarrassed by it as much sure yeah 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 like there is something for everyone I mean there's something for everyone in the romance world but there is something for everyone like writ large you know like yeah um, yeah like it, it feels like you know, yes, reading is a hobby, but like for me, I'm like, well, the sub reading the subgenre is actually the hobby. Everyone reads, you know, it's like everyone goes to the store. You have stores you like, you know, and it's like, what do you like, you know? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So that's been like some unexpected benefits and stuff like that. Even mm-hmm. just being more online in the community. Um, yeah. yeah, like I hope to have a lot more of those like types of conversations. Cool, cool. Well, I am excited to have one of those types of conversations now. Um, so the book that we reviewed is The Worst Guy by Kate Canterbury. It is currently $4.99. So here's a synopsis that I wrote five minutes ago. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Attention hospital staff, we got a code zing heating up between two <laughs> rival colleagues They need to get to the bone department, stat. When hot and hot-headed Dr. Sebastian Stremmel and Dr. Sarah Shapiro get into an argument at work, they're required to attend a conflict resolution resolution sessions together for eight weeks. Their mutual resentment intensifies, but that's quite common when a story is diagnosed enemies to lovers <laughs> additional symptoms include an increased amount of amazing sex not being able to stop thinking about this increased amount of amazing <laughs> sex and a complete rut- rupturing of the life you had planned that's so good you're good at this <laughs> Thank you. again anyone i a hundred thousand dollars a year that's all that's my low rate for it i will yeah. I, I will synopsize <laughs> your book (laughs) I love that (laughs) um so you like I asked I usually ask the guests like oh is there a subgenre you're interested in and you are like Mm -hmm. down for anything yeah are you like that yeah yeah Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I'm down for anything down for anything (laughs) yeah totally I think I definitely like probably I guess lean towards maybe like romanticy or like yeah. I do really like like a vampire mm. romance or whatever um or like a sports romance or mm. stuff like that but truly down for anything I've I feel like sometimes I'll do like six months of dark yes. um and then like mm. six months of mafia <laughs> and, then, yeah. and then six months of like like monster or whatever sure. like truly mm-hmm. anything yeah I'm down to try anything because I think that when I first started reading it was like mostly contemporary romance and I was mm-hmm. like yeah this is cool but um I feel like trying something new because you can always dnf it especially if it's under five dollars exactly and <laughs> like that's another thing is like if you don't like a book you can put it down again totally. there's no test at the end <laughs> And I, exactly. And I actually really do need to remind myself of that because I do feel bad when I can't finish a book. But like Me too. it's just it it it's like oh, all of this added like shame I'm bringing upon myself that I don't need to, you know, and like yeah. Absolutely. Or just like perfectionism like around your goodreads like style like Yeah. <laughs> And I feel like at the end of every year, like everyone's like, and, and I, I think this is great that people who do keep track, you know, this is no, you know, shade against them. But like, you know, when people are like, how many books did you read this year? I read, you know, 375. And it's like, cool. Like, 
but like it doesn't matter at all either no it (laughs) it truly doesn't no seriously Mm -hmm. I know people get on their high horses about that and it's like there's some years that I read 15 books and then there's some that I read like seven like it it really it depends on your life and like what you're doing and stuff like that so or what you're into so yeah no absolutely like you don't know what's going on like you could have kids and or you know the job and whatever and then there's also like well like what is a book I know what a book is but like you know with like kind of platforms like Wattpad and like you know kind of webtoon it's like Oh, yes. well, like uh, those are stories written in prose or those books like what's yeah, a book anymore, yeah. you know? Totally. Yeah, I love Webtoon. I haven't really got into like fanfic or like mm-hmm. unpublished works, but I'm sure I will one day. But yeah, I I love that. Or novellas like, yeah, I think a lot of people are like, oh, it has to be like 300 pages. And it's like, just read a novella over two hours and just like love your life. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. It's like, like, it's just like life is so hard as it is. It's so hard as it is. Mm-hmm. Like, come on. Why make, why make reading hard? <laughs> I know. I know. I know. <laughs> um well back to this story um so we have Sebastian and Sarah and they work in this, they work in a hospital in Boston. Um, and they are, they like are enemies. They like hate each other. Yeah, it was very much like Grey's Anatomy. I haven't watched Grey's Anatomy in like five plus years. I've never seen it. And like it's been like kind of coming up in my algorithm. Like everyone's talked. Well, like I feel like everyone in my life is like rewatching it now and it's coming up in my algorithm. So I might start watching. Yeah, because maybe it's its 20th season. Maybe that's why. But Um, like the first couple seasons of the show were truly like grade a television Mm -hmm. but it really reminds me and I it it isn't even like a specific character but the um like plastics Mm -hmm. reconstructive surgery being the like easy Mm -hmm. like frivolous superficial um field and then the emerge doctors that are like you know like down to try anything and like brave and just like run into danger type of thing like that type of enemies Mm. to lovers thing I think is like a very like that's been explored elsewhere but I Mm. I love it I absolutely (laughs) loved it and I'm not like I haven't like read a lot of doctor books or no I mean I've read books where like they're doctors but not like that take place like th- like the main location is in a hospital you know and it's yeah. like oh yeah they all live together they all sleep mm-hmm. they, they all you know in the series sleep together um and you know and so it's like oh it is like kind of incestuous kind of collegey and yes, yeah yes. I guess that there's a Grey's Anatomy kind of element to it yeah absolutely but yeah I like that stuff too because yeah it's like it's not forced proximity in its purest form but there's mm-hmm. some proximity and some workplace tension and stuff like that so you you hit a lot of these like micro tropes um yeah. that are really really fun mm-hmm. absolutely so like how did you feel about like the characters when we first meet them I mean they're stuck in their in their ways obviously they are yeah. very messy people I loved it <laughs> yeah it is really nice to see I think I've been reading a lot of books with really unapologetically messy characters lately Mm -hmm. um and I've really enjoyed that um yeah I guess Sarah would you classify her as like is this a sunshine grump grumpy Mm. like see the thing is is that I found both of them grumpy at times (laughs) both of them both of them also were sunshiny at times because like he's excited for cheerleading and pizza and then yeah. she's excited to like go to work and wear her cool shirts but then sometimes she's like oh I hate people and then he's like oh I hate this you know and it's like you're both grumpy and sunshine <laughs> no, <literally>. you're both <laughs> yeah. the same <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah I guess I'm like maybe it's like I guess are they both introverted as well? Like that's what I Sebastian gathered. has like friends, but they're kind of like f- seem like friends at a distance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and same with like um same with um Sarah, who like very explicitly says that she's like an introvert. But like I feel like Sebastian had like one good line like in chapter one or something. He's like, it amazes me that my friends um 
they these people want to be friends with me and it's like oh yeah. I felt that before like oh yeah like yeah. it's not even about like what energizes you but it's like a how it's like a self-esteem thing that's so true I know that's so relatable yeah he's like why do I keep getting invited to these people's like parties mm-hmm. and stuff like that it's like yeah, yeah. because people like you <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> it's like yeah. you're yeah it's and it's like is that so hard to believe and I I think maybe again like I, I know I'm like this but it's just like I'm always like kind of like looking out for like oh they're just you know fooling me they're gonna they really yes. don't like me. they're just being nice they'll you know, see whatever. the real me and like hate me and stuff like that yeah exactly. so relatable <laughs> yeah it was so relatable and it was relatable to see that like in because these characters I, what I also liked is that they are 39 and 42 which is my age range and I was very excited about that <laughs> yes uh, that's another thing that is so like it's something that you maybe don't always notice but it's like kind of you register it subconsciously that like mm-hmm. so many people in the books are like we're 18 or like we're 25 and like Mm -hmm. stuff like that it's so refreshing to see people like mid to late 30s my god yes absolutely and it just like makes you feel better like because you know it's like I'm still a mess I'm 39 years old and like you know and it's just like oh like I celebrated my birthday recently and I was like should I have had kids and you know whatever I had yeah, those thoughts. Yes, everyone yeah. does yeah. whatever and then it's just like oh you pick up a book like this and then I breathe it I was like oh, okay I'm fine <laughs> totally no that's yeah that's really relatable yeah you kind of feel those pressures because they're almost like automatic thoughts mm-hmm. but then once you can like read and talk yourself out of it you're like okay yeah. no this mm-hmm. is fine but it's those messages that just come so easily to you that yeah Mm -hmm. it's hard to stop those yeah so what happens in the book is that like they are having an argument it's again it's more or less a plastics versus hero I'm gonna like I'm gonna save the day run into the fire hero doctor and like she Sarah gets like so mad and she's like gripping the like a hospital curtain and it comes down and and like they're both like just at this thing and just the the ceiling breaks and for some reason they get in trouble (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah it's again this this is the plot point that I'm like this I could have seen on Grey's Anatomy because he is like an emergency doctor so it's like save like life over limb or, or whatever so it's yeah like, yeah that makes sense. I'll just yeah, mm-hmm. yeah staple her face mm-hmm. and then Sarah's like why would you staple this really young woman's face now I have to like do a bunch of other stuff but it's like you could have like sewed her up and it would have been mm-hmm. way less you know um noticeable mm-hmm. and I thought um actually I've never read a is it Kate Canterbury yeah Kate? it's spelled Canterbury but I've been saying Canterbury because of Canterbury I don't know In Canterbury Tales yeah same <laughs> yeah. like literally same yeah um but she I think did a really good job because there's like this scene there's the kayaking scene like she's mm-hmm. really good at like um writing these like really chaotic events because you can just see like Mm -hmm. you're holding you're gripping the curtain and then you like tug it and then the rails come down and stuff like that and it's a disaster yeah a hundred percent like you're so right you really felt the chaos in this book and Mm -hmm. you felt the chaos like going inside of their minds you know like I mean one example is Sarah where you know she's recovering eating disorder but she still you know has is gastrointestinal issues so hung up over food and you just hear her thoughts you know whenever yeah it was which was relatable and like I was like oh this is so fascinating like you when you're recovering you're still in recovery you know totally so relatable and I was thinking about this all the time it's like the maybe not repercussion not consequences like those aren't the right words but like the long-term effects of something that may have happened when you were younger but you still feel them now and yeah she has like really isolating gastro issues Mm -hmm. which I I feel like a lot of people will relate to that where it's like I don't want to go out in public I don't want to eat with people I don't want to wear tight clothing or like whatever it Mm -hmm. is and how isolating that is because especially like we live in North America it's like 
one of the main hobbies is like going out for drinks and dinner. She doesn't drink. Yeah. Um, and stuff like that. And it's just, it's can be so isolating when that's like the main thing that people do Mm -hmm. um after work and on the weekends and stuff like that so yeah Yeah. I found I found all of that really relatable yeah I agree like that I feel like that's a conversation I've been having with so many people lately of just like just the stress of you know going to a bar you know and like having to like look at the menu beforehand and like are you okay you know just like just going to a bar isn't as easy as it is for you know other people and it's like hard it's sometimes hard to remember that yeah totally yeah I just talked to so many of my friends so it's like oh I just want to leave early because I feel so uncomfortable and mm-hmm. then I'm in a bad mood because I'm mad at myself <laughs> for feeling exactly. like this and yeah. then I'm not being pleasant I could mm-hmm. even be like actively like hurting the relationship with people because I'm being a bitch because I'm unco- like it's just yeah it's so it, 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 it snowballs you know yeah 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 which is why both of them have such you know walls up mm-hmm. because um being vulnerable is tough and yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so after like the ceiling falls or whatever or you know they have the accident and like something that like I like kind of struck some accord with me was that like it felt like Sarah got in more trouble yes than Sebastian yes, yes. I mean yeah <laughs> there yeah <you> go. <laughs> I, I think that's another piece of this was like kind of it wasn't like a main driving point of the mm-hmm. story but yeah it was definitely touched on that she was deemed like overreacting and mm-hmm kind of some of those words that women often um which I want to say also she was completely right in the right oh about God. this like, she was right about everything you yeah, know what I like yeah. realized today is that like you know who's wrong whoever built the hospital uh, like yes, put yes, in a good yeah. hospital but like what if it was a patient that was in there and they accidentally knocked it down it's like where's your building inspector that's the real issue here no totally because <laughs> yeah because it's like how it wasn't so heated that it was like violent or anything it was it was really no. kind of like an accident I would say mm-hmm. um but yeah she was completely right he shouldn't have put staples in this girl's face he should be more of a team player and call upon his colleagues and uh yeah but she was yeah named a lot of the kind of overreacting can't handle pressure type thing that women in like power positions and like leadership positions face Mm -hmm. um and because it also seems like he not only you know is a guy in a male dominated field but like he is really well respected in his field and he was mm-hmm. like up for possibly like a chief yeah head of, yeah I don't know emer- the emergency he, department or the whatever. head of the guy head of the place but yeah. yeah like I feel like him going to um um uh uh like conflict resolution was just out of like policy like he didn't just they were just like just do it because of the promotion probably like it's yeah. just whatever you know and for her it's like you need to be a better human <laughs> Because you might not keep your job or find another job after this because your references will have gone to shit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you kind of, so they like kind of start out just like in different places. Like he it doesn't take it seriously. Sarah's pissed because she has to take it seriously. Yeah. Also so relatable. Mm-hmm. It's, isn't that so frustrating? Like, I just think of back to like group projects or whatever when you had people that like you know like paid their way through like their tuition and so like I paid their way mm-hmm. through college and they're just like bare knuckling it to get an A on this project and then mm-hmm. you have like kids that are just like coasting that are just like yeah. eh, whatever it like felt very much like that totally um, yeah it sucks yeah. when like yeah like I just like you know even just like someone who has a separate attitude than you like just not caring like it it just he came across like he doesn't care about her career when it's like dude take five minutes and understand like the situation she's in you know yeah 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 totally yeah I felt like there were points in this book I I did really enjoy this book I thought Mm -hmm. it was a fun read uh but also touched on a lot of like 
yeah, real life things. But some of their fighting, I was actually like, I actually don't like this. It was like... <laughs> Her fighting was so intense. And yeah. I think that's why this book was like, I devoured it in a day. Mm-hmm. Because this was the most intense fighting to fucking pipeline. <laughs> I've ever seen. Yeah, it was feral. I love yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, no, there's points because like I was like, I don't know if this is like realistic, but like... I want it to be, but like, yes, of course, 100%. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like, yeah, sometimes I was like, oh no, they're like, how will they get to lovers is what I was thinking. Because I was like, yes. oh no, this is like bad, bad. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like, it is like, I feel like when you're thinking that, like, oh, it's like, okay, that is a sign of a good, like, enemies to lovers story. And I was thinking that, but there, it's so interesting because it's like, in these books, like with in the in enemies to lovers tropes, I think like the foreplay is them actively trying to like get under the other person's skin. But as readers, we are all so subjective in what would get under our skin and what we're like, yeah, yeah that's fine. And so yeah. you have so it's kind of fun to see like these everyone's different reactions to you no know, him saying that to her stresses me out. Actually, I was more stressed out when that happened. You know, it yeah. is so subjective. No, that's so true because I was like, for me some of it was like a little bit it seemed a little too below the belt Mm -hmm. whereas like I do really like enemies to lovers it's about like of the kind of like big tropes it's probably my favorite but like um and you do want like authentic enemies and I do think that they were authentic enemies but Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm like, I would be still so mad at this person. Yes. Like, yeah. Maybe I just hold grudges. <laughs> I no. don't know. Well, I mean, we're petty people. But yeah, like, the thing yeah. is, is that like he refers to her, like, and I, again, the term screech owl really bothered me just using something screechy just, and she's a woman and, you know, I don't know, like that Exactly. No, exactly. Like that. That was teeth clenching. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Totally. Like he calls her a bunch of like pet names or like sit like tiny tornado and stuff like that mm-hmm. but no totally like those are the things that I was like okay but like that's not him being like um I don't know I, I can't think of a good example but like cute flirty and like poking yeah. fun and like riling you up I was like that's just using like a a gendered like exactly, <laughs> stereotype <yeah. laughs> that's just like it's just like you're not thinking you know like it, yeah. it's like kind of like like again like you know say you could say loud annoy or whatever but like just the term screech which has been used to describe a woman's voice like it just I don't know it's like mm, that kind of like misses the mark you know yeah for yeah. me as a reader you know maybe yeah. she liked it like maybe she loves being called this well she does but like you yeah know, um I yeah it bothered me totally and like um a lot of it was like oh you're like a brat and stuff like that and I do like the brat like same yeah yeah but like some of it I was like this isn't like being a brat or like whatever the opposite is but like I was like this is yeah yeah, like I was like this is mean (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah some of it is just mean and Mm -hmm. but what's so funny is that like there are other people who are like I don't actually think didn't think it was that bad and it's like totally they they, she they kind of just like leave each other you know like there's no after kind of care when they have sex you know like for a while you know like and it was like that I in you know enjoyed but it also was like got me thinking well how is the lovers two lovers I mean I know they're fucking but like how is the two lovers part gonna happen because totally They were just going, like, they, you know, would have their conflict resolution thing, and then at the end of the day, they would just be so heated that they would, like, full-on fuck. And then, like, he would just, like, leave. And then it was, like, back to one, you know? Totally. And it's so funny because the first time that they have sex, she's, like, heading to shower. And she's, Mm -hmm. like, lock it on the way out. Like, he's, like, not trying to talk to her, but, like, kind of lingering for a second, and she's just, like, like, fucking leave. Yeah. Um, and he puts, he, his aftercare is a yeah. glass of water, which obviously is mm-hmm. sweet and stuff like that, but, um, there's one time where he goes to leave, and he, like, stops and sees the glasses, and he's, like, shit at, like, he's, like, I don't even want to get her water, and I'm, mm-hmm. like, okay, like, <laughs> Yeah. 
it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. yeah. It's okay. Um, so, like, what did you think of that dynamic? Um, just with the heat level um, that that were that was in the book. Yeah, I liked it. Like, I these are the I think scenes and stuff that I really liked was were um, because they worked. This sounds cheesy, but they couldn't work as a team in the hospital, but they could in bed. Like that was when you actually saw some moments of maybe not like exactly tenderness, but like teamwork for sure. Teamwork and maybe respect. Like Mm -hmm. I I definitely think like there's this time where she's like, um, oh, like let's just have sex because because I think he was like going down on her or something like that. And she was like, oh, I can only mm-hmm. orgasm once or whatever. And he's mm-hmm. like, no, we're like figuring this out right now. Like, yeah, let's go. Triage. Triage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I liked that. Like the kernels of something else mm-hmm. and the, the mystery around what will happen because we see these little bits of or like when they're in their couple couples counseling it sounds like couple it really does seem like couples counseling yeah it really does um and he does he take the raisins out of her yes. trail mix trail mix yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so it's like those little tiny moments keep me going because yes. i can see the end game I guess absolutely yeah like you kind of see like the things that annoy him so much like he's annoyed that she's not eating her raisins which like yeah. you know and he's like oh, just take them out you know and it's like well that's what their rest of life is gonna be like that's awesome you know yeah and I just yeah. like loved that like you know how like sometimes like li- the little things that that can that someone does to annoy you is like only annoying because it's them doing it like I feel like if he had any other buddy that was like I don't need the raisins he like wouldn't think twice (laughs) 100% and then once you also love someone you don't give a shit that they're not eating the raisins or that they don't close the toilet lid or whatever yeah 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 because you see them in a different light (laughs) exactly and it just like reminded me and like you know at that part in, in in the book like it just reminded me like there, you know how there, there's those people who always have something to say about and something negative to say about something like or just like they always think that we're all like waiting for their commentary you know like he he will like gladly talk about how much he hates Boston but he lives there you know like I just like once I remember like I was meeting someone and like they like remarked on like the way like pictures were like um like arranged on a wall and they were just like I don't like that and it's like no literally no one asked (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. he's like that guy you know like no one asked but okay sure there's another thing you just don't like (laughs) 100% and the only reason that I was like okay with this was because I think sometimes when you're so like depressed or lonely or sad or Mm -hmm. angry at the world or whatever that's, that's what you, who you become. <laughs> like, it's what you do. Yeah, it's, it's not, what you yeah, do. Yeah. Exactly. It's and it's human. You know, like I it's think it's very human. It's like being petty, it's a very human kind of feeling to have when just like things aren't right. You know, totally. And reading that, I empathize. But when just like you are experiencing it in real life, mm-hmm. instead of being like, oh, I wonder what's going on with them, they they seem a little agitated. I'm like, oh my God, you're so annoying. Or like, exactly. you're so negative. Yeah. Because it's like so hard in the moment. You just think everyone is after you. And clearly yeah. these two, how would they not think that? They both got each other in trouble and or are making them do something they don't want to do. You know, so they're probably blaming the other person. Yeah. And they made so many assumptions about each other. Like, because she doesn't eat with the group because of her ED, mm-hmm. like previous ED stuff he's like oh she's like better than us or like standoffish or like not like yeah like she good enough to hang yeah, yeah we're not good like enough us. for them yeah mm-hmm. exactly so it's like they're just making so many assumptions about each other um and sometimes it takes yeah yeah something which is, like this to happen totally which is like and it's easy for them to do because like we learn later that like Sebastian's dad like abandoned him and it's like yeah. of course like he would 
think that. And then even with like Sarah, like she has a very like toxic relationship with her dad. And so like because of that, like she feels like no one takes her serious. You know, it's just like all of these things from like their childhoods. It's like affecting their ability to like love each other. (laughs) I know I know so relatable I know it was just like oh my god I love this I love this um so um what else let me see okay so like they have this wild sex and then um I think like we kind of just like see kind of the fun tropes of you know your enemies to lovers your hate fucking all this stuff but then they kind of like call it truce I guess when they both wind up vacationing in Jamaica same place same time totally by accident I know these are the things and like love love (laughs) this is like it's like a meet cute or whatever in a different way but like it's one of those things that you're like this only happens in the movies like this Mm -hmm. only happens in the books like exactly what are the chances but it's like no, but there's because it's destiny. Exactly. There, it like, it's like there is a God. Like, I mean, yeah. it's a writer, but you know, like, it is, totally. It is very, it was like very funny. And I know that like there are probably some people who are like, I don't believe that they would have stayed at the same resort. And I'm like, who cares? You know? No, like, I know. I know. I sometimes get in my head like that too. And then it, then I always have to remind myself, it's like, yeah, you're reading a book. Like, right. or like, it's yeah. like, this, this isn't mm-hmm. real life. Like, yeah. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> You're good. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, like, when they're there, you know, they, again, they call this truce, and they they decide to be, kind, I guess, more or less their authentic, a version of their authentic selves when they're not fighting. They decide to just have a good time together, and they yeah. really grow close. Totally. Yeah, this is, I feel like, the most enjoyable I don't know. I guess it, it's it's like if you're there for like the heat and the spice and stuff like that, I guess the first like third or whatever is good. But the, mm-hmm. the romance really comes in yes. in this um, middle section. Mm-hmm. Um, I really enjoyed this bit. I thought that it was a little like they moved. They were so easily able to do the truce that I was yes. like, I kind of wish there was like a little still like push and pull or whatever. Agreed. Um, but mm-hmm. I do also really understand that when you're in a different location and you're like not in the same um, like place that you see this person like work and you're in a place, you know, where you're not worrying about the day to day stuff that mm-hmm. you basically can be a different person. <laughs> and exactly, that's kind of yeah. like what happened with them. Like they were almost completely different absolutely and like there was a part of me like to what you're saying like there was a part of me that thought like oh is it so easy for them because like it's like you go you is it is it harder to like tell the people you work with that you're in love with this person that you used to hate when it's just like easier to just keep up appearances and it's like we'll go to work pretend we hate each other then we don't need to do a big explanation and then we just like go home and love each other and it's like I thought there's a part of me that was like what if it's that like what if that's why it was so easy (laughs) that's so funny well that does come up like they're like hiding it from a lot of people Mm -hmm. so that means makes so much sense but I yeah I think when it's like the pressure is off and stuff like that and Mm -hmm. um because they do say like when we get back to Boston it'll be like the same and stuff like that so once you put that like deadline on it and stuff too I think it's just easy to have the relationship kind of um change absolutely and you kind of like feel the stakes in that moment like like finally they are getting along and they're growing and I think like back to like the um what you were saying about, like, the raisin situation, you know, there is, like, a moment where, like, one, she explains her, her e- you know, eating disorder to him, what she can and what she can't eat, what it's like for her to go to a, you know, buffet in the morning. And he is just right by her side, like, taking mental notes, not judging, not saying anything, just, like, this is what I have to do, like – it was so it was so sexy that he didn't judge her. I don't know. No, no you have no idea. Uh, my last episode on my podcast, I just covered Love Theoretically by Allie Hazelwood. Mm-hmm. And it's about a pathological, I say pathological people pleaser because of the Taylor Swift lyrics, because right. the author chose Taylor Swift inspired songs for the chapters. Sure, but how can you not? Yeah. Yes, she is a people pleaser and she has diabetes. And so kind of similar to the ED stuff, like, 
there's things that she needs to regulate her insulin levels mm-hmm. or sugar levels. Um, and it's just so nice when a partner can advocate on your behalf when you constantly have to Mm self-advocate um or uh if you don't feel like you're can self-advocate opt out of a lot of stuff Mm -hmm. and so and like just being able to be witnessed and seen in a way that like she didn't have to over explain it she didn't have to say it three times Mm -hmm. or anything like that he was just observant and just got it right away and yeah at that point, I was like, is this too much to ask for in real life? Like, I, know. <laughs> like, like, I was I, like, where is this guy? <laughs> exactly. Like, I have yeah. been in situations like that. And it's like, he didn't, like, he didn't make a joke. Like, I was just surprised he didn't yeah. make a joke or ask a dumb question, you know? And not not that questions are dumb, but, like, sometimes people ask. Some, really, sometimes they are. Yeah. Sometimes they are. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just, like, waiting for him to be like, oh, well, uh, well actually, da, da, da. And it was like, no. And it's like. The se- and so it's like the sexiest thing in the world was that he was just quiet. Like, what? It what level are we holding people to? <laughs> no, but that was the the sluttiest thing he could do in it this so book. Fucking slutty. I yeah, love it. I know. It's so true. And like, yeah, just uh, after the breakfast buffet, at one point they go out for dinner with her dad, mm-hmm. and she orders something and then but like substitute stuff and then doesn't mm-hmm. get that and he's like oh no like and she was just gonna eat it and he's right like, yeah no 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 no. like this isn't the way like this needs to happen and you're just like oh my god he listened he saw he yes. stood up for me like mm-hmm. this is too much yeah because like <laughs> she feels bad like and it's like I get it she feels bad about like being like oh take it back blah 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 you know what I mean and so but he like t- is telling her to like advocate for herself yeah so like take sexy. up space it's yeah. totally okay mm-hmm. um it's it's not anything wrong with you to get what you need at this point yeah exactly he's like you gotta eat lady like yeah <laughs> I love yeah, it. Yeah. But then, lo and behold, she it, it is a very emotional seeing her dad and the whole thing is very tense. And I think she has like her sensitivities can make her sick, you know, like based on, t- you know, stressors. And yeah, so she ends yeah. up getting sick to her stomach um, outside the restaurant. Well, I guess she just gags. I don't know if she like full on pukes yeah, or whatever. But yeah. he, again, isn't just like, whoa. He is like rubbing her back, holding her hair back. Mm-hmm. Loved it. It, it it was a it was so romantic and like I I do like the um I forget what the trip's called but like when someone's hurt and someone takes care of them oh yeah yeah um, I know yeah I love that trope too of just like healing the healing yeah. trope yeah. yeah the healing trope Nurse, nursing back to health <laughs> yeah. yeah and I also think that this is like the benefit of dating a healthcare professional is like <laughs> <laughs> like when she's explaining some of the like you know like not I don't want to say gross but like the like more you know human yeah, it's exactly. human but she's like, like talking about bowels you know yes yes, like, yes yes again yes. the first time I've ever read anything about irritable bowel in a romance novel and so many people have it you know and it's like no, it's so true you know yeah. and so it's just like nice to <laughs> <laughs> yeah no that's so true because I feel like when you think of being sexy it's like especially mm-hmm. I, I feel like this as a woman but like it's like you don't fart you don't poop exactly. like you you don't have like there's you have gastro issues like yeah. absolutely not that's off the mm-hmm. table <laughs> like, exactly and it's like when you deal with those things in real life like 75 of a per- percent of your thought process is about pooping yeah. and about farting yeah. and you're like scheduling yeah. it in your head and so it's like yeah. well how can you also be a sexy girl on top of that you know I know <laughs> I know I know that's so true but yeah I loved that yeah but I think it's like he doesn't get grossed out because he like he's seen a, it all mm-hmm. he's seen it all as a doctor so I'm like yeah medical field is that has an upside (laughs) exactly (laughs) yeah and I think like in you know just like from my experience just you know dealing with doctors who dismiss women you know and like not that I would ever expect that in this type of book but like you know it was just nice to like you know you you, just because of my experience like kind of on edge I'm like is he gonna say something stupid is he gonna like say that's not real or whatever he doesn't and it's like oh my god he like 
I was like stunned. I was like, he just like listened to her. This is stunning. I know, I know, I know. (laughs) And I loved the scene. I think it was before Jamaica where their friends try to set her up with somebody and she has an episode at the party Mm -hmm. and she is kind of panicking about it. And he like, he doctors her, but in a way that's like, wasn't overbearing or judging or like Mm -hmm. called by like this oath or whatever like it was out of like love and care and Mm -hmm. um it was done in a way that yeah it wasn't like babying her or like being weird about it it was just it was so sweet so Mm -hmm. yeah I loved that type of yeah respect and stuff absolutely and then like when after she like you know gags in the bushes and they're in the car and she's like holding a napkin up to her face and he's just like comforting her with words. I'm like in tears loving this. I love the scene so much. And me too. And I think he like kisses her for it or something. And because I think it's from her POV. Because mm-hmm. uh, it's dual POV. Yeah. And I think she's like, he like kissed my forehead and it was like clammy and sweaty and gross. And it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, but he doesn't care because he loves you. <laughs> like, yeah. But it's just so funny when. The things you think about when it's like someone is kissing your forehead because mm-hmm. they want to show that they love you. And in yeah. our heads, we're so trained to be like, oh, my God, my skin might stink and exactly. it's sticky. <laughs> yeah. And especially like, I mean, for me, like the idea of like, you know, <laughs> the vomiting, like I just like it's like that's for me, I find it like that would be like the most humiliating thing you know if I'm just like on a date with someone and I vomit on them and like totally you know and the fact that he and he's just like not grossed out by it about the potential even like I don't know I was just like I love this me too me too because so many of these like things in our head can spoil Mm -hmm. moments um and not letting those that aren't our fault that are just Mm -hmm. you know products of this world and so it's like to not let those win in these circumstances is so powerful I know and it's like and it's so easy too and it's like oh like it's really not like it but it's just it's just it's hard in the sense that you don't think of it you don't think to just listen you don't think to not apologize you know it's just like all of these it's like a behavioral conditioning that we've all been like molded into Absolutely, totally. But yeah, some of these, like when we were talking about at the beginning of the episode, like these are the moments that I'm taking for myself and like wanting to integrate that into my own life. Absolutely, yeah. Because like, it's just like, I feel like, you know, as like you're getting older, like you kind of are like, I feel like it's like there's some sort of like default, like we're a problem, you know, like being yeah, female, whatever. Yeah, the inconvenience. We're... Exactly, yeah. yeah. And, you know, she very much says that she's a recovering people pleaser in the book. I think she's still a people pleaser Yeah, 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 um, yeah. And, but like, I think the, I think what she is is just noticing it more. And like, obviously that comes with like living and wisdom and whatever the fuck. But like, you know, it's just like, you know, um, what was I going with this? I don't know. I just think like just she was still kind of hold, she was still holding herself back even though she was so self-aware. Yes, but that is the crux of people pleasing is mm-hmm. that you are so self-aware about everything that you do that yeah. it's really hard to be in your body mm-hmm. um when these types of things happen. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I just relate to that so much. Oh my god, so much. And then at the end of the night, he like puts her to bed and gives her some crackers. They watch a movie. And she was like, I'm really sorry. I'm sure you wanted something else. And he's like, this is exactly what I wanted. I wanted to be in bed with you, you know? Yeah, was that like, was really cute. I know, <laughs> I, I know, so much. I know. <laughs> totally, totally. Yeah, I, sorry to keep drawing parallels to love theoretically, but oh, it's please. just stuck yeah. in my head. But like a very similar thing happens where it's like, I don't want this thing to happen because it's what you expect me to want or whatever Mm -hmm. and it's like she expected him to want to have sex like on their vacation in the evening or whatever and it's like 
that's not the case at all. But, you know, you get that in your head. 100%. Yeah. I'd be, the amount of times I would, if it were me, I'd be apologizing every two minutes. Like, oh, me if, too. I'd, just, I'd still be apologizing. <laughs> if it happened five years ago, I'd still be apologizing to him. <laughs> me too. About that me one too. night. <laughs> <laughs> me too absolutely As, and like this goes for romantic relationships but it's also like happened with friends or whatever like if you get too drunk or whatever and you're like I'm sure you wanted something different tonight and yes. it wasn't us like at home because, like, like before the bar <laughs> like, exactly like because as a people pleaser the last thing you want is exactly. to be the drunk person because exactly. you're literally having someone take care of you it's like yeah. literally a cr- it's like because like I mean I've had those nights too and it's just like I they still haunt me to this day I'm like I cannot <laughs> believe <laughs> I know I know totally yeah <laughs> yeah I'm seeing all these like things kind of come together as Mm -hmm. like these small behaviors that I'm like again noticing in these types of books that I'm like oh this like yeah is relatable is basically what I'm trying to say like do you think that's like kind of also with the like evolution of the romance novel in itself with how characters are being portrayed like you know like before I think I don't know. It's just like, or, or is it romance novel writers and the content changing along with us, I guess, you know, like they're showing the quote unquote messier sides of being, which is not really that messy, but like they're showing kind of like our quirks and, and thoughts and, yeah. you know, hang ups and things like that more so, you know? Yeah. Like, is it the chicken or the egg? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. I don't know. What do you think? Cause sometimes I think it's like, because modern like I think you know this era of like the 2020s or whatever Mm -hmm. we have seen a lot of strides in like just being more authentic like Mm -hmm. I think that's like another benefit of TikTok is like seeing people versus like a very curated Instagram and Mm then um being open and honest about a lot more stuff about like with mental health stuff and physical like just a Mm -hmm. lot more um feelings I feel like are are happening happening in like a more public space and stuff like that so and uh, yeah maybe less emphasis on like this perfect idea of beauty and sexuality and stuff I don't know Mm -hmm. I don't know I don't know if it's a chicken or the egg or yeah or it's like just this both kind of thing I mean you know it's like looking back at like history or whatever like art history it's like you look at art and then you look at what's going on like politically and they're always like correlating you know so exactly yeah Yeah. no totally like you can glean a lot from art about what was happening in the world which I guess is what people would do if they read these books if they are from the future and right exactly (laughs) are trying to depict what it was like dating in the 2020s like exactly this is real I guess exactly and so I think that people like maybe this is indicative of whether it's people influencing the story or the story influencing people of just being more authentic of like owning you know, their flaws and their quirks and just like, you know, kind of realizing, just like kind of being able to recognize the pressures that we put upon ourselves more than we did five, ten years ago. Totally, totally. And I think there's just such a conversation about like representation in books and Mm -hmm. in other media that it's like, we weren't seeing it, so I'm going to write it and Mm -hmm. I'm going to put myself in the in the book or whatever and Mm -hmm. these are things that I struggle with or or whatever or or live with and so I want other people to see that and yeah because so much of the romance genre is like yeah the the flaws aren't or like the hang-ups of the characters aren't relatable like this Mm -hmm. like or you don't see them throwing up or like I don't know, having messiness in this way. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Or like thinking about the fear of shitting your pants. Like she like yes, said something and yes. she's like, I'm scared this is, this is going to make me shit my pants. And I yeah. have that thought literally 20 yes. times a day. Yes. And I was like Way blown too away. Often. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 100%. Like, yeah. I'm and sure it's... So we always have that thought. But like that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, no, I, I feel like 
it's yeah it's like that and it's like and you can still have a fulfilling sex life and mm-hmm. be loved and stuff like that and yeah 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 I guess that just wasn't the conversation a few years no. ago no and like I feel like I was kind of like molded to kind of keep that kind of stuff to yourself like you're on your period keep it to yourself and there's you know period sex in here you have to shit like keep it to yourself like you know like don't show anyone how like physically and emotionally messy you are (laughs) no that's so true I know Mm -hmm. because in other in previous and like other books like it's like yeah they wouldn't get their period in the book Mm -hmm. or they would but it's like Uh, they don't have sex or they don't talk about it or it's like avoided or whatever. Um, Totally. I think that's also a doctor thing as well. It's like, Mm -hmm. because I have a sister who's a doctor and my other sister's a nurse. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh my God, like look at what happened or like, this is so embarrassing, but I have Mm -hmm. like this like acid reflex right now or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they're like, okay I like stuck my finger up some guy's ass today (laughs) like no like and and I'll do it again tomorrow (laughs) yeah (laughs) my my sister-in-law is a nurse practitioner and like I'll like send her like look at this mark on my leg you know and she's like go away (laughs) yeah yeah, I do that all the time honestly for a girly that has like some health anxiety Mm -hmm. having them in the medical profession was the best thing that's ever happened to me it's been like really nice like when I like like I when I get a cold sore like I she could like prescribe me Valtrex which is like so convenient no you know literally (laughs) my god I know I know my sister did my flu shots this Mm -hmm. winter just like that type of stuff that I'm like yeah this is the perks but I think the perks of dating someone in the medical field is like yeah it's like they don't care about period blood they see mm-hmm. um they don't see it as disgusting they just see it as like a bodily function which exactly. everyone should really just which get like, on the same page yeah. thank you yeah. yeah like I think like you know there were like movies this past year that involved period sex that I saw and it was just like kind of interesting how like you know it was the um, the Saltburn the movie Saltburn which I mm-hmm. loved and mm-hmm. the other movie on um Netflix where like he's going down on her and she has her period and it's like kind of like this kind of ballsy kind of scene to show like yeah when it's just like oh like what if that just like wasn't a thing anymore you know what I mean like why what if this doesn't feel risque or or feels taboo like the way totally it's intending to be I yeah you're right because it's like that happens in households everywhere like yeah across Mm -hmm. the world like it it, it's so funny what is considered taboo totally and then it's like but it <laughs> like, is what? yeah but, but it's it like, is it is and it's yeah. just like I remember like you know going on dates with someone and then just freaking the fuck out when I had my period I'm like yeah. you know texting my friends like what do I do in this situation I know. If, like, or just I, being like oh dateless week yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like, yeah. w- it's like we're like, like every so often, it's like we have to like go off and live. Like it was like the red tent in a way, you know? Like you no, know, literally, <laughs> no. We still I know. live like, in the I'm red on tent. my courses, and I'll just <laughs> fucking disappear for a week. Yeah. yeah, I am dirty now, husband. Please don't One, talk to me. One hundred percent. I know. It's like, yeah, it's. It is really refreshing because it's so funny because you said there's period sex in the book. And for a few minutes, I was like, was there? Because it was so. It was so whatever. Yeah, it was so just like normalized and like it wasn't really discussed beyond Mm -hmm. like the first couple minutes. And then. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So like during their um, like stay in Jamaica, you know, like we are all as readers they're having these this these great connection but we're as as readers we're waiting like when they get back like the, there are stakes they're going to go back to how they were and you know we do have like their I guess it's a third act breakup you know yeah yeah devastated I was devastated yeah this is this part's tough because she doesn't know what she wants mm-hmm. moving forward and he's basically being like oh, no, like, we should date. I, like, love you. And she's yeah. like, I need time to think. Mm-hmm. And I think that's fair of her. I, I feel mm-hmm. like sometimes I'm like, you should know because I feel like sometimes that is kind of like a gut feeling of, yeah. like, what you should do. 
Uh, but then I also think when you're a people pleaser and you're thinking about other people's emotions, you're not tapped into yours. Exactly. So you might need a few days to think about yes. it. And I do think it's also logical for you to be like, yeah, this was good, but we were on vacation. And vacation romances are a lot different yeah, a than lot real different. life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I I think you make such a good point because I feel like I read a book, you know, a few books ago where it was like the main the main fuck up of the, you know, third act breakup is they didn't say how they felt in the moment, you know. And so it kind of like is in, in, implying that, oh, the lesson is like always say how you feel in the moment and you won't fuck up you know but this is like hey you could take time um maybe explain why which she could have yeah you know yeah 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 there could have been like a little bit better of communication Mm -hmm. I think because while I think that was a good decision for her in the long run I think you know leaving your partner it's not stonewalling per se but like it is kind of like leaving them I think I read this in a book somewhere or like some type of relationship, whatever, self-help book or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it was like when you leave your partner with like this really big question mark Mm -hmm. about where you stand, it's like just not fair, I guess. (laughs) Like I I, that is Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah. And it's like when she explains why it took her some time, I was like, oh, now I get it. Because she was just like, we were on a cycle. And I'm and like, I am used to cycles with like my eating, with my mm-hmm. people pleasing. And I needed to just like get off our cycle of we go to conflict resolution and then we fuck conflict resolution. Then we fuck. I needed to like take a step away from it. And yeah. it's like, oh, she just, well, I mean, obviously we needed a story, but I'm like, she just sort of said that earlier, you know? <laughs> no, totally. <laughs> like, exactly. Like if she, because she says that in Boston, it's like if she had said that when they were leaving on the trip, that it was like, I really like you. Mm-hmm. I, it's not, I'm not questioning whether I like you or not. Yeah. That's for sure. But mm-hmm. I'm just questioning, or not even questioning, but like I'm just considering what this will look like because mm-hmm. we've been on a cycle. Yeah. And then I feel like he would have been like, okay, yeah, that's so valid. See you in a week or whatever. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and to be fair though, I will say, you know, he at this point knows about her eating disorder knows Mm -hmm. that she's an anxious person like I feel like what is it fair of him to kind of like be is it fair for him to be expecting an answer just knowing who she is and her history and how like her brain works no totally it's interesting yeah I don't know yeah yeah I don't think he was like super pushy I think he was like I will give you time but I'm hurt by yes. the time piece. Because, like, he just yeah. went on on a limb and was like, I love you. Like, you, you, if anything. Which was a little crazy. It was <laughs> He says it in such a nuts way. And he's just like, no one will love you like I love you. And it's yeah, like, yeah. that's insane. I hated, yeah, I hated that. <laughs> I hated that. I hated that. But, like, um. Yeah, yeah. He says it, and it's like, wow, you've really only actually known this person for, like, because they hadn't even finished their eighth session. So this is, like, under two months or whatever, which Mm -hmm. they've been working together for years, but, like, talking for, like, a few months. Yeah, and I'm just, like, three days in a resort does not a relationship make. I mean, I know, obviously, this is, like, when you realize you fall in love, this is great, but, like... To, to drop that bomb, you know, at, at, during this moment. Like, <laughs> timing, bro. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Yeah. I I didn't like that. But I, I, I always think if this was your life, he probably would have said, like, I really like you. I want to date you. Will mm-hmm. you be my girlfriend type thing? Yes. But this is yeah. a, a book and got a, a standalone, so we got to wrap it up. And we got to wrap this, it up. Yeah. In this one. So the L bomb mm-hmm. happens. He did it. Yeah. yeah. I, I, what I really liked is that, like, you know, in the midst when they're back in Boston, he gets a migraine, which who doesn't get a migraine these days? She takes care of him. I know, I know. And again, I yeah. felt those loving feelings that I felt in Jamaica. 100%. Yeah, I really liked that because it was like reciprocal mm-hmm. um, care and respect. And it was like they cared for each other in a way that worked for the person. Yes. Not mm-hmm. what they wanted to do. Exactly. Not like in a way that made them look like a hero. It, exactly. it was about the other person. Yeah. 100%. So I, I really liked all of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. It was very um, sweet. It was so sweet. And then, you know, we have the ending where, like, she realizes he she loves him you know when um she overhears him like kind of complimenting her and um and then they have like their makeup where like it was just so simple she's just standing in front of his apartment and he's like I had a shit day don't tell me (laughs) that you're not ready right now I can't handle it and she's like I'm ready (laughs) yeah that was really cute yeah 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 it was it was good it was really it was a good book I enjoyed it I loved it yeah yeah um okay so I want to ask you like what other thoughts do you have what final thoughts do you have tell me tell me everything yes okay a few I'm looking at my notes Mm -hmm. um I think in general not about this book I don't always love the like hidden ed Mm, I hear you yeah Mm -hmm. like yeah I just triggering and like you know yeah it's like I don't know. I don't know if I've seen a book that I've liked the. I thought this was a really realistic portrayal where it's like yeah. she can talk about it in a way that's like recovered. Like mm-hmm. you could tell that like she has some distance from it and she's like still feels some things come up. But yeah. the way that she can explain it to him, I think, it, yeah, like is really like she's healed and stuff like that. Um I just hate when that's, like, the kind of, like, catalyst. Mm, Yeah. Not that, again, that this was exactly using this as the catalyst, but, Mm -hmm. yeah. It's, like, to make her a more sympathetic character. It's, like, oh, let's just, like, give her an eating disorder or something. Yeah, yeah. And, like, sometimes, I guess that another thing is, like, these books make me start to feel sad because I'm Mm. just, like... The way that he responds is, you can tell it's written by a woman. Yes. It's, yeah. Like, you and I are like, this is exactly what we would want, or like, similar oh, to what 100%. we would want. Yeah. yeah. And like, mm-hmm. I've just never witnessed that. No. So, oh my God, no. Yeah. Like, so, yeah. It's just like, yeah, I guess yeah. Like, those are some of my vinyl thoughts that it's like, sometimes I just have to be like, okay, like, this is written by a woman. Um, but I don't know, maybe, I don't know. Sometimes I get in my head about those things a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I definitely felt that way with this book. Like it was like there, you know, just because there were just, the characters were so grounded and so real and like, you know, I didn't have like the same struggles that they did, but relatable ones and just seeing them like being perfect for each other with these very relatable struggles. It does make you feel like, oh, I wish I had that, you know, or like, yeah, yeah, I 100% get it. Yeah. I think that's why sometimes I like, like romanticy and stuff like that. Cause it's like, this isn't going to happen because exactly they yeah. are a vampire or they're yeah, fae or, like, or whatever. They're like, running from a dragon. Like, yeah. Yes, like, this yes. is, like, yes. yeah. Yeah. They're, cause like, I, I totally agree with you. Like there are just like some books, like, um, especially that Anne Hathaway movie that's coming out. That yes, was based the on idea of the you. idea of you. That book messed me up. That book made me really sad because it was like, the way it portrayed Los Angeles and like it kind of made this woman like like Anne Hathaway it made the main character seem like she was like this nobody but like in the book she lives in the most fancy neighborhood in Los Angeles she's an art she has like a lot of money she's and owns an art gallery or whatever and it's like she's actually like really well to do she's not a nobody you know and it just like kind of messed me up in my head because I'm like well am I what's if she's a nobody then like what is everyone else what am I you know I know yeah you make it about yourself (laughs) no totally like (laughs) finding fulfillment like not in her career or her daughter or her life or whatever mm-hmm. it yeah and herself it's I know it's like this 20 year old's kid which I I definitely yes. want to cover this on my pod too because I think that is really interesting that mm-hmm. and that book I, it's interesting that you thought that way but yeah, yeah sometimes um I yeah I I don't know about the ED stuff mm-hmm. um I don't know what it is that like sometimes just it doesn't hit for me. I get it. Yeah. So because I feel like it's you know it is a common thing we've seen in books before. We see it in books. We see it in movies. It's that and that is all to say that it is a real issue in real life too. But like when it's used like plot wise used as like a crutch like 
you know it yeah. does feel it's hard not to go to that place mentally you know and think that way totally or like if the female character has been like essayed and then not that Sebastian even really had like a hero complex but it's mm-hmm. like I've just read in so many books where it's like they've had something like that yeah. happen in their lives and mm-hmm. then it's um yeah like the catalyst for them getting together or like it's the reason that he realizes that he like respects her <laughs> like I, know. I think that's yes. I feel like I'm working this out in my head it's because like, they I hear you because they have that moment at the beach where he's like I wish you would have told me you had an eating disorder which exactly Thank that you. made me mad because that's her prerogative to tell yes. you know what I mean like he shouldn't yes. like be like sure like you know you want to you love people you want to know their struggles blah 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 but like the fact that like he felt entitled to her story like if you didn't tell me I would have hated you long you are not he doesn't say that but like that's just like what it felt like or like yeah I was like judging your eating habits which is so much shame around EDs like Mm -hmm. that is what the fear is yeah but yeah that is it it's kind of like when guys say like oh well I have a mother or and a sister so I like respect women and it's like or you could just respect women like regardless exactly it's like what happened if you didn't have a mother or a sister that's (laughs) horrifying to me (laughs) exactly exactly what kind of person would you be (laughs) totally totally shit out of me (laughs) yeah I'm glad we could talk it up because I was like what doesn't hit about it but yeah it really Mm -hmm. is where it's like they don't see you as like or they don't see your choices as viable unless you had like trauma attached to it or something Mm -hmm. yeah that is sometimes annoying yeah it's an interesting like fine line because it's like you want to give your character a backstory you want your character to be like well you know like fleshed out but at the same time you don't want to kind of just like be pulling in the traumas willy-nilly you know yeah Yeah. are you do you write at all are you like into that kind of thing Mm -mm. Mm, just a reader just a reader you think you would ever write a romance novel it's so funny because I'm like I feel like I'm a creative person and I read so much that I feel like I'm like almost like waiting for an idea to come to me but like literally has not like I just yeah not Mm -hmm. at all yeah 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 yeah. well listen we never know sometimes you you never know look at Kelly Reynolds podcaster to writer like exactly exactly yeah yeah and there's lots of like I feel like actually especially in this genre there's a lot of like other careers prior to yes to writing and stuff like that and so concurrently never never. Yeah, yeah or concurrently mm-hmm. totally totally but yeah. yeah um not not in my future I feel like same yeah <laughs> everyone always asks because like I do write other stuff but like it's like yeah. I try to yeah but people are like I do it or you should write a romance novel and it's like it makes sense on paper I just yes, don't yes, yes. it's just it's a task and I'm not good at those things <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm not good at tasks <laughs> <laughs> me neither and like I feel like it's like yeah I might have like a catchy idea or like maybe dialogue could come to me but like when you actually think about writing like the the setting and the climax and like mm-hmm. the stages like that's not me yeah <laughs> that's not me I can't it's like that. you like and I've tried and you it's like it really is a lot of work and like it's just, that's why it makes me so mad when like people kind of disparage like I could do this and it's like well can you no, no. you can't oh you my cannot. god yeah yes oh my god I, I feel like that all the time even sometimes when people comment on my podcast stuff I'm like mm-hmm. you pick up you pick up the mic then <laughs> like- yeah exactly yeah like I was in the um rip bodice and like I just like oh, was love. there one day and there was like a woman who came in and just was so loudly being like I should be doing this just writing shitty books and it's like there are so many other customers in the bookstore right now that you're just like who does that like do you know who is so rude I mean it made me mad because I was just like in a shitty mood that day but like at the you know at the same time it's like there are people who are working the registers who love this there are people yes. browsing you know and it's like what what do you where do you think you you are you know totally totally I was in Nashville this December and I went to the country music hall of fame Mm -hmm. this is my second Taylor Swift reference but we were in the Taylor Swift section listen it's it's that's the time it's it's the it's the time and this um 
man walks in and he's like, I don't even know why she has this section in here. Like, she doesn't even write good music. And it's like, <laughs> it's like, yeah. okay, then you write 13 hit albums. Exactly. <laughs> and it's also like, no one asked you. Like, it, like, who are these people just like walking around thinking we're all waiting for their opinion? I mean, Sebastian mm. is one of them, but like. Yeah. <laughs> No, this would be Sebastian, yeah. like, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so no, funny. I hear you. Um, okay, so now I want to I want to ask you for a rating. Um, yeah. Okay, how many uneaten raisins do you give this book? <laughs> One out of five uneaten raisins, you didn't like it. Five out of five uneaten raisins is you loved it. I feel like to be a little fancy McFencerton, Do I it. think I would give it like a three and a half. Okay. Yeah. Not quite a four, but I don't think it deserves a three either. So I'm right. going to give it a 3.5 unneeded raisins. Sure. You can take a bite into a raisin. I'll allow that. <laughs> yeah, that's a little, mm-hmm. just a little off the top. <laughs> yeah. I think maybe just because of like where I was at like emotionally when I was reading it like it just like was exactly what I needed to read at the exact right moment so I'm gonna give it five out of five I also give five out I of five to that. everything but it really no, is, I, like, <laughs> like, I, I always want to qualify my ratings mm-hmm. too it's like yeah I am rarely giving over like a three I am I, uh, brutal it's that way <laughs> like, it is it's good though like and I and I feel like there are like other things where I can be like very critical about like oh that's not good but it's mainly like bagels like it's yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> totally totally no I like would recommend this book hands down and yeah. again last love theoretically reference but like if you read that book and liked it and you mm-hmm. haven't read this one I think or vice versa I think they like fit hand in Ooh. hand I'm gonna read love theoretically next because I have some reading time to myself now maybe that'll be the book I'll read because I started yeah. listening to your episode so I was like oh maybe I should read it before I listen yeah, to it. yeah. and I really think like this book is a really good um like comparator like mm-hmm. you know those Instagram posts it's like if you liked this read this yeah 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 I would definitely say that for these two books awesome well I am so excited to get reading um Tori thank you so much for returning to the show this was so much fun thank you so much for having me remind us about your show where we can find you all of that stuff yeah so I host ready to be romance a romance (laughs) novel review podcast where we cover mainly the plot and discussion and then just like some fun internet research about the author and the the reception of the book and stuff like that um it's very vibes only we're not those girlies that are like doing all the theories about what's <laughs> happening in the next book or like we're not right. trying to solve the riddles or like mm-hmm. whatever we are there for the vibes I hear um, it I love it yeah and you can find ready to be romance at all podcast platforms and I also host another podcast that Becky has been on love that once podcast. or twice yeah and, it's so yeah. fun it's called Ready to be Petty, and I cover pop culture, reality TV, and celebrity gossip. So you can find me on either of those. And Becky is going to be on my pod covering the Unhoneymooners at the end of April. So I'm really I'm looking ex- forward to that. Yeah, I'm so excited. I want to say I did see that you had Ice Planet Barbarians, and I've, been, I've covered that book too many times. So I just want to say that was my first trip. But then I was like, I heard Unhoneymooners was good. So I was like, let's do that one, Becky. Don't get nuts about aliens. <laughs> yeah, no, I am so excited. I'm really trying to do like a big smattering of – genres Mm because I feel like sometimes um pods can get like really specific into one which is fun but because I read all sub genres I'm like let's do everything absolutely yeah I feel like I sometimes can get into that zone of like wow I haven't read a human romance in like (laughs) months like (laughs) I should I feel weird um (laughs) (laughs) no and then someone asks you like at work like oh what are you reading? And you're like, oh, it's a gargoyle. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, back off. <laughs> exactly. And I'm like, Jesus, like, lady. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. Well, again, Tori, thank you so much. I had so much fun with you. Thank you. Me too. Hey, if you love this podcast, maybe leave a review on Apple Podcasts. And if you don't love this podcast, why are you still here? You don't have to listen. Just go do something else.
For links on today's book, as well as Tori's podcast, you can check out the show notes or visit the episode page at tstlpodcast.com. And the amazing synopsis I wrote is also available on the episode page at tstlpodcast.com if you're in the need of something brilliant. Thank you so much for listening to Too Stupid to Live, and have a great rest of your day.